discussing Philippine Accounting Standards 2 for inventories. So by definition, inventories are assets held for sale. So assets held for sale. So we will go by the definition one by one. Assets held for sale. So if the business is merchandising, that is merchandise inventory. So merchandise inventory are goods that are available for sale. So for merchandising business, we call their inventory merchandise inventory. But mer inventory includes not only merchandise inventory, but also so as it's held for sale in on the records of business. Let's say your business is a shoe shop. So your inventories are uh, shoes. If your company is selling ready to wear, your inventories are your RTWs. If your company is a real estate developer, in that case, your land or building is not property, plant, and equipment, but rather accounted for as inventory because it suits the definition that it is held for sale. So land and building are inventories for real estates. Okay. Uh, here's another thing. In the process of production. So, for merchandising business, their inventory is called merchandise inventory. For manufacturing business, their inventory are called finished goods. So they have, but aside from this inventory, they have finished goods. This is the equivalent of merchandise inventory. Finished goods available for sale. So aside from finished goods, inventory also includes the in the process of production. In the process of production meaning it includes work in progress. Work in process are unfinished goods. So the inventory also includes work in progress. So you have finished goods inventory. You will see this in the balance sheet finished goods inventory, WIP inventory. Then you have here, or in the form of materials or supplies. So that means for manufacturing business, aside from the finished goods, work in process, they also include raw materials. Sometimes we call this the direct. We also, not sometimes, we also call this the direct materials and we also, included also in the definition are supplies to be consumed in the production. Therefore, you have here also manufacturing supplies. So they are also included in the definition of Uh, inventors. So, manufacturing supplies, okay, these are materials, direct materials, these supplies are called indirect materials. So, in a manufacturing business, our inputs are direct materials. These direct materials should be converted. So, we use direct labor. So, we have direct materials and direct labor. 
So aside from your direct, direct materials and direct labor, you also have indirect materials and indirect labor. So you have indirect materials and indirect labor. You have direct materials. Direct materials are those materials that can be directly seen in the finished products. So while indirect materials are those uh, not directly traceable to the product. Likewise, direct labor are those directly involved in the production, say the factory workers. While indirect labor are those not directly involved with the production, say the supervisor, the security guards, in the factory. So we have here indirect materials and indirect labor. These two form our factory over head. So once processed, these three are transferred to the WIP work in process. Once this process is done, this is transferred to our finished goods. So that's the process in a manufacturing business. They put in materials, labor, plus indirect materials and direct labor. Once it's in process, it is transferred to the WIP inventory. And once this WIP is done, it is then transferred to the warehouse. So in accounting records, it is transferred to the finished goods inventory. So that means when the question, uh, when asked in the problem, is this included in the inventory? Yes, because the record materials form our WIP. So all of these are inventories. So raw materials, check. Labor, yes, it, it becomes part of WIP, therefore labor is also included. Indirect materials, indirect labor, they are also, factory overhead are also part of the WIP. So when you see the problem, factory overhead, uh, you will include this as part of our inventory because it forms part of our WIP or work in process. Inventory part two. So we have here, should we include or exclude the item as part of the cost of the inventory? One, factory overhead. It says included because, as discussed, inventory includes your finished goods and work in process. And this work in process includes direct materials, direct labor, indirect labor and indirect materials. So this two forms your factory overhead. So WIP is part of the inventory and factory overhead is part of your WIP. Therefore, factory overhead is included as part of your materials. As discussed this now, indirect materials also included. Factory supplies used in the production. That's part of the definition. Store supplies used in sales and promotion. Store supplies and sales used in promotion are excluded because they are selling expenses. Custom duties and taxes are included because by definition, we include all costs necessary to bring the inventory to our store. So therefore, these are necessary to be paid. Value added tax on purchases are excluded because when we purchase items that has bought our entry, for example, the cost of the item is 10,000. Our VAT or value added tax rate is 12%. So when we purchase this, assuming cash purchases, so it's debit purchases and debit okay but on purchases is called input tax again you will have your taxation subject but but on 
purchases are called import tax. So you will be paying an import tax of 12%, which is 1,200. Your purchases is 10,000. You will be paying your supplier 11,200. You will receive this value, this input tax will be used when you pay your taxes. That's why VAT on purchases are excluded. So this goes to the VAR. So what are the tax on sales? Of course, it's reciprocal purchases and sales. This goes to the VAR. Brokerage commission for arranging imports. Again, our rule is all necessary expenses to bring in our goods are part of inventory. Sales commission to agents are excluded because they are selling expenses. Freight on purchases included again to bring our uh, goods. Then it's FOB shipping point. Okay, what's the difference between FOB uh, destination and shipping point? When it's FOB destination, the seller pays for the freight up to the destination. So when we when we pay, uh, sorry, when we receive the goods, we don't pay for the freight. It's the seller who pays for the freight. Therefore, it's included. It's not part. The company uh, did not cash out for this. Okay, then we have freight on sales. Freight on sales, freight on sales, whether FOB shipping point or FOB destination, these are selling expense. Actually, these are called delivery expense. So whether it, it, it's FOB destination or FOB shipping point, it's excluded. It's delivery expense, part of our selling expenses. What are the cost of items sold? So for example, we, we say we sell something that uh, needs repair, for example, if we sell TV, televisions, cell phones. What are the cost are expense? Not part of our inventory. Factory personnel, not directly working on the product, but they are in the factory. So these are indirect labor. That's why it's part of factory overhead. Salaries and changes of store personnel are selling expenses. Trade and discounts on purchases. Just now we discussed that trade discounts are not counted. So it's included but as a deduction. Okay, so we got it from the purchase price. Purchase price of the goods bought from suppliers. Of course, it's the debit purchase amount here. Then we have handling costs related to imports, the same rule. Necessary to bring in the goods part. Packaging cost for shipment to customer. Packaging cost, of course, excluded. It's not part of the product anymore. Special handling charges on shipments to customer. Again, going up to customer. Insurance. Take note again. Our rule is simple. If it's going in, it's included. Part of the inventory. If it's going out, it's included. It's part of our selling expense. Insurance on shipment for purchase of goods. Again, going in, included. Handling costs for purchase items. Included. Insurance on factory building. Factory building, necessary for making of the product, so it's factory overhead. Factory overhead, part of inventory. Insurance on store selling. Uh, normal spoilage, excluded. Normal spoilage, uh, included. So it's like uh, mis mis malpractice, mismanagement, something like that. Okay? And you have rework. Rework cost of defective finished goods. Of course, rework are part of the, the inventory because we wanted that these finished goods to be in a saleable condition anymore. So it follows the rule of making the goods 
into its saleable condition. So it's included. So.